This um, conference will now be recorded. Will you be going back over what we did on Tuesday? Because I, I can't speak for everybody else, but it was so fast. I tell you, I, I really didn't grasp it. I went fast? <laughs> okay. Well, of course, we always go back and review. And so, so certainly we're going to review. And of course, when you see something the first time, uh, you know, that's typically, you know, I'm not expecting that you will understand it completely the first time. So we're always going to come back and review it. But then I'm going to have to participate. So I know and you know where you are with the material. So I do present, but on the other hand, you've got to present back so we can get us, you know, see if the learning has occurred, but I appreciate it. Uh, you know, those comments, Ellen, in terms of, you know, where we were and, you know, that's why I asked. Okay, so let me see if I can share my screen. What are the rest of y'all classmates at? Okay. We began talking uh, last time, reviewing the fact that the goal in this course, the ultimate goal in this course, is that you've got to be able to prepare an income statement statement of retained earnings and balance sheet that's where we are now and eventually you have to be able to do a statement of cash flow and we have a template for this also so you will be learning you know that's the goal of the course how to prepare and understand these four financial statements now we talked about generally accepted accounting principles and I tell you, you're responsible for knowing each of these organizations, the Securities and Exchange Commission, the Financial Accounting Standards Board, the Governmental Accounting Standards Board, and the International Accounting Standards Board. You're responsible for knowing uh, what the responsibilities of these four organizations are. Then I gave you 15 generally accepted accounting principles the business as a single entity concept, which should be a review of legal environment, specific currency principle, the specific time period principle, the historical cost principle, the full disclosure principle, the recognition principle, the going concern concept, the matching principle, which is a lot of what we're working with today, the principle of materiality, the principle of conservative accounting, industry practices, constraints, consistency, objectivity, accrual basis accounting, and the assessment of cash flow prospects. Those are four fundamental, 15 fundamental uh, concepts that guide us in preparing financial statements and you're supposed to be familiar with those items. Are there any questions on any of that? The four organizations are the 15 generally accepted accounting principles that we utilize in preparing financial statements. Are there any questions? Okay, so moving right along, we then said that we're you know, we're working with the accounting cycle, and we did steps one and two the first couple of weeks, analyzing transactions and making journal entries. Then we went to steps three and four, posting to the ledger and preparing the trial balance. We skipped steps five and six and went on to seven and eight, preparing the statements and closing the accounts. 
So you would have a sense of the complete cycle, you know, pretty much in terms of what's involved. Now we're making a step back and going to steps five and six, making adjusting journal entries and posting those to an adjusted trial balance. And most times we just, uh, we don't prepare the trial balance at four. We make the adjustments and then do it at six. We can do it at four, but uh, right now we just, you know, in, in this course, we just do it at, at six. And so adjusting entries, and let's talk about what are adjusting entries. They are journal entries. So they have to have a debit and a credit. They are journal entries that we make typically at the end of the period. If these journal entries are not made, if they're not made, then the accounts do not have the appropriate balances. So the balance sheet is incorrect and the income statement is incorrect. So we have to make the adjusting entries so that the accounts will be appropriately stated. And so this is just a little narrative description of it in a picture format that gives us a general guide to what we're talking about. Once again, adjusting entries are typically made at the end of the accounting cycle on the last day. And let me just stop for a second. I did grade about a third of the uh, midterm quizzes. I graded a third of the midterm quizzes. And it's three observations. Uh, number one, uh, some of you are not using different sheets. You got everything on one sheet and you need to be putting things on different sheets. I know it's helpful, but that's just not standard practice. And if you go out to work, especially accounting finance majors, and you have everything on one sheet, uh, that's not going to go too well in your evaluation and how you present it. People go from sheet to sheet, not going all over one sheet. So you need to move to that. Secondly, in calculating net income, and I don't know if that person, I sent this person an email. You subtract expenses, not add expenses to get to the net income. So you subtract expenses, not add. So I, and so I had one person that had that issue. Then for the A students, there are no negative amounts or parentheses on journal entries. You don't have negatives and you don't have negatives in the T accounts. It's always a debit and a credit. And so if something is not going the right way, you got to switch those accounts around. So when we have, as an example, when there's a net income and we make closing entry three, we debit income summary and credit retained earnings. If it's a loss, you got to reverse that journal entry. You're going to debit retain earnings and credit income summary. You don't keep the, the journal entry the same and put in parentheses or negative amounts. So are we clear on that as we go forward? Any questions on that? Okay, and so that's... Now, I will have all of that graded for you uh, by tomorrow. And so you have a preliminary of where you are at midterm. But you've got some more work to do at midterm. As you know, a student, you got those 73 journal entries to complete. 
and a lot of those extra journal entries relate to the material that we're going over now so rather than just having you start on it I just delayed it uh, so you still have got that to do before we finish that midterm grading period so the A students will have the 73 journal entries the B students will have about 55 the C students about 45 so that will be the way we finish up that period but a lot of what we do relate to these journal entries so I just delayed it so you'll you know where you stand on the quiz that you take you took and that's probably going to be five people four or five people who will have to retake that quiz and I will meet with them separately just with them and we'll work to go over it so nobody is left behind so for people who don't have at least a 15 you meet with me separately to rework that quiz okay so just wanted to you know, I want to make sure you understood that I'll repeat that at the end of the class period but that way you so you hear it twice but we aren't we aren't finished yet you still got to go and get those 73 journal entries journalized posted to the ledger trial balances financial statements and uh, closing entries okay moving back to adjusting interest and if, and if you can remember we make interest such as buying supplies but if the supplies are used up they're no longer an asset so we bought some supplies debit the supplies credit cash or credit accounts payable then that's fine when the entry is made but if our remaining supplies i think as we see here we got nine thousand in the account for supply but when we get to the end of the period there are only three thousand in supply so what does that mean you can't lead the supplies account along at nine thousand when there's only 3,000 in it, you've got to make an adjusting entry to correct those accounts. What accounts are off? Supplies is off, and supplies expense is off. And so we've got those, our, those first set of transactions that we looked at, you know, one through 11 and 15. So we have those transactions, those we might call regular journal entries. But now we got to make adjusting journal entries because things have happened and then not so much external things. These other, you know, the regular journal entry that's typically an external thing that's happening. You got a transaction with somebody else. But now something internally has happened. You have used supplies, and so you've got to make a journal entry for that. So that's what we're looking at in terms of these journal entries. They are journal, they, so let's just say that they are internal journal entries. In steps one and two, we looked at external journal entries involving a transaction with someone else outside the organization now these adjusting entries are internal journal entries okay and so we had the situation where we purchased we, we said last time 2,000 in supplies using cash an external journal entry type 7 then we had another entry where we debit the supplies and credit accounts payable and external journal entries so these top two these preceding entries were external journal entries we get to the end of the period and it looks like you know we got nine thousand in the account but we count the supplies as only three thousand 
And so now we got to make this internal entry, AJE, to debit supplies and credit supply, to debit supplies, expense, and credit supplies. Once this journal entry is made, then supplies is on the books at 3000 and supplies expenses on there at 6000 Are there any questions about anything that I have just said? Are there any questions? The rationale of what we're doing. You know, we got to make the internal uh, journal entries. Okay. There are four types of adjusting entries. Unearned revenues is the first one we looked at, and we said that's the easiest one typically. And then prepaid expenses, and we only looking at supplies. So in terms of what you answer today, we're going to look at uh, AJEs with respect to earned revenue, and we're going to look at AJEs with respect to prepaid expenses. We'll look at accrued revenues and accrued expenses next week. So we're just categorizing uh, the types of adjusting entries. What are prepaid expenses? Prepaid expenses are basically assets that you buy supplies, insurance, equipment, auto, inventory that are used up in the business. And so the AJE is called a prepaid expense because you purchase the asset, but then the AJE records the fact that you use the asset. Then we have unearned revenue. We talked about this last time and gave the example of the purse that cost $80,000. If you're running a business that sells something that costs that much, you're going to ask the person for the cash up front. So you say, okay, you want this. Uh, you got to pay me in, in advance. So you debit cash and credit earned revenue. You hadn't earned the revenue yet but you're not going to go and buy it and then try to collect the cash later. You're going to get your cash in advance. So we debit cash and credit earned revenue. When we deliver the item, we then debit earned revenue and credit sales or revenue. Unearned revenue, we said, was what kind of an account? a liability account and being a liability account you know we still owe the people the money we don't get the purse in we got to give them their money back only when we get the purse in give it to the customer is that revenue earned any questions on prepaid expenses and unearned revenue that's all we're dealing with this week any questions Any questions, Eleanor? Have I slowed down some? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now let's look at these important rules about adjusting entry. And I told you that, and I told you three times, cash is not in the adjusting entry. Now, it may be in a preceding entry, external entry. It may be in a succeeding external entry. But you can see that if, if it's an internal entry, you know, you can't have it involving cash because you already, you know, no way to sort of be internally involved with cash in general in terms of making an adjusting entry. So when you get ready to make that adjusting entry, no cash. Second, you always gonna have an asset account, excuse me, a balance sheet account, 
and an a income statement account involved in making adjusting entries. You always are going to have an balance sheet account and a income statement account, an account on the left of that chart of account and an account on the right of that chart of accounts when you make your adjusting entries. So let me just go through this quickly and see if I can get to the chart of accounts. Uh, and of course, you should have read all of this last night. Okay. Here's our summary of adjusting entries. We're just working with Roman numerals one and two, prepaid expenses and earned revenue. And so you can create your own chart in terms of, of the adjustment. But in terms of mobile choice questions, I will be asking you the account status. That is before an adjustment, if it's a prepaid expense, what is the account status? The assets are overstated and the expenses are understated. So I expect you to know that if it's unrun revenue, the liabilities are overstated and the revenues are understated. So you need to know the, the status before the adjusting entry. Then what is the adjusting entry? If it's a prepaid expense, you always gonna be debiting expenses and crediting assets or contracts there. So you debit an expense and crediting an asset. If it's an unearned revenue, you debit and liability and crediting revenues. This doesn't change in terms of what's happening. And you got preceding interest when you have items adjusting interest types one and two. So here's your chart of account with adjusting interest, with adjusting interest. And so I said, if it's an adjusting entry, Roman numeral one, we're going to have an account on the asset side, on the balance sheet side, and the income statement side. And I got AGA, AJE one about the accounts. Now, you know, we always debit expenses. So in AG one, AJE1 can involve depreciation, office salaries, insurance expense. Uh, I think that's all of them. Yeah. And, and we would debit these accounts and then we would credit supplies or prepaid insurance or actually accumulate depreciation that we credit the octal, and we'll talk about that a little bit later in the day. So when we make AJE1, I sort of laid out the typical accounts, but these accounts are credited now in the journal entry for adjustments. They were debited when the asset was acquired. And then we're going to debit these expenses because the expenses have not been recognized. So this is a new chart of accounts for you as it relates to adjusting entries. So let's see if we can go back up a little bit. So we're going to go to unearned revenue, unearned revenue. And we said unearned revenue was what? And we said it was, Eleanor, what's unearned revenue? I'm sorry, uh, income that has been collected, but nothing has been given. So you got the money. Right. But you have not done the work. Right. And so therefore, if GameStop collects 
$50 in advance from 200 customers for a game that's going to arrive in two months. These customers want the game. It's only 200 And so GameStop's going to be happy. They're going to debit cash and credit earner and revenue for $80,000. All we did was multiply $200 times 50 so that's what game that's the journal entry GameStop makes and they're very happy they got their money before they did the work then when the customers pick up their money well prior to that, let's look at the accounts we debited cash and we credited earner and revenue which is a liability account when the customers come and pick up the games we then debit on our revenue and credit sales. So the unearned revenue is a liability account. So it's a balance sheet account. Sales is an income statement account. And so GameStop is happy to make this entry, debiting cash and crediting unearned revenue. They're also happy to earn that revenue by delivering the product. Are there any questions on what we just did? Okay, well, let's see if these people are ready on earning revenue. Let's see if you all are ready. What's the first one on unearned revenue? Here we go. 22. Who has number 22? Is that Ellen the Thomas? Let's bring in. Yes, sir. I'm here. Okay. Let's get to work. Okay, number 22, assume JHJ GameStop in 2017 receives from 1,000 customers $50 for NBA 2K18. At December 31, 900 customers have picked up their games. Required, record the entry to, require, to record the receipt of the $50 from 1,000 customers, then make the adjusting entry to record the delivery of 900 games to customers. On my uh, journal, I have my preceding entry, $100 for cash, 50,000 I debited. That's a transaction four. I have 305 for unearned revenue for 50,000. Okay. You want me to continue? Continue. Okay. My next entry is 305 unearned revenue of $45,000. And that's because um, the um, 1,000 customers paid, but only 900 picked up. So I debited 45,000 that and I was confused Dr. Boyd on whether that was a transaction type 20 or 21 because I think it changed last okay, so year so 21 that's fine okay and then for uh I have sales of 45,000 to credit and that's an account 500 that's for year 2017. Okay. okay. Are there oh any my, questions? Uh, Can everybody make this entry now? So Elena has her 10 points. Next.
I have number 23. Which one do you have, Burns? 23? Yes, All 23. All right. Let me hear about 23. <clears throat> Excuse me. Assume JHJ GameStop in 2017 receives from 3,000 customers $100 for NBA 2K18. At December 31st, 2,500 customers have picked up their games. Um, record the entry to record the receipt of the $100 from 3,000 customers, then make the adjusted entry to record the delivery of 2,500 games to customers. I have um, the preceding entry for cash. I have 300,000 debiting. I have um, and crediting unearned income for 300,000. Uh, for the adjusting journal entry, I have unearned income as 50000 and I have um, debiting 50000 and I have sales crediting 50000 How many of these customers picked up the game? 2500 So how much cash was earned when the 2500 games were picked up? 250k. So why you told me twenty five thousand? I I said fifty thousand, but I I guess I had my understanding incorrect because I thought because we unearned was what we did not earn. Yeah, we already got an unearned account. Okay, but so if GameStop won't this to be the situation. If they don't deliver the games, what's going to happen? The people going to what? If they don't deliver your game, what you going to do? Go back and get my money. All right. So the goal is what? To deliver the game so you can keep the money. That's what that's what GameStop trying to do. So when 2,500 okay. customers come in there, what's GameStop going to do? They're going to deliver their games. And then what journal entry are they going to make? They're going to debit um, 250, 250,000 for unearned income and credit sales for 250K. Okay. And you're not going to miss this again, are you? No. It was clear when you explained it today, but I had already oh, said in my life. So you said I... You agree with Alan? I just ran through the stuff, and y'all couldn't understand. No, that. I just it's, it was just a little confusing. Like I hear different parts of stuff when, when you repeat it again. So it was. Well, just that's clear. why we repeated it. So yeah. Alan, if somebody else don't say something, you can just get another journal entry and get your points back. Okay. Twenty. Professor Boyd, can I ask a question? Say so what now? Can I ask you a question? Sure. Um, sure. I'm trying to write it down. Like, did you, are we supposed to put the one that she did under the one Miss Eleanor did? Well, or did eventually, you erase it? eventually, you're going to sit, you're going to, you, you should be, you should have started you a uh, Excel spreadsheet for the adjusted oh, journal okay. entries. And then you put you, you put your numbers in, and you're gonna have all forty something to turn into me. Okay. So so you putting this on the Excel spreadsheet, filling it in. But since you're a B student, you know you should you know you should be waiting for these other students to fill it in. You should be going on and working and getting them done. Isn't that right, Miller? You already got most of these done, right, Jazz? No, that's not right. That's not right. All right. Okay, so 24. Who has 24? That's Deja Edwards. Going once. Going twice. All right, who wants some points? 
Uh, can I attempt mine? I, I needed help on it as well. Number All right, two. go ahead. Okay. Let me scroll back up. Number two says, in 2018, JHJ Rental Car Company purchased supplies paying cash in the amount wait, of- Wait a minute, wait, ho, 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 ho. You can't go, yeah. Huh? We had review. I want 25 right now. Oh, we're going to order, okay. Yeah, we got it going on. We can see we we be going too fast. We have to go back and I have to go back and review what I said last time. You you're going too fast. Well, nobody got it worked then. Y'all can work it on your own. Twenty six. That's Skurlock. Is she here? All right, put the zero in here. Any more of these? Uh, all of those. Okay. All right, Miller, we're almost ready to get to you. But I'm going to go back up here and review first. I don't know why you were in such a hurry. Okay, let's talk about prepaid expenses. Now I expect everybody to be able to do earn earned income. It's prepaid expenses, what you have to realize is that when business buys something, it's, they buy it so they can make money. So buying an asset is not the key, inventory, supplies, and everything. It's whether or not they generate income. Those prepaid expenses those all of those assets are eventually going to become expenses so that's why we call the assets prepaid expenses you buy something that has value that's going to be used up and you need to be generating uh income so supplies insurance autos buildings and equipment all of those are, are prepaid expenses. They're assets, but they get used up. And so the asset account is overstated. So let's look at this first one. Supplies such as paper and pen, uh, you know, create a debit to the account. So we had two situations. Uh, so suppose we bought supplies paying cash of five thousand dollars. So we debited cash, debit supplies, credit to cash. We bought the supplies. We checked supplies and it's only two thousand in the account. So when that happens, when that happens, we got to make this AJE because we had five thousand. As we look at the T account is now worth 2000 so we, we're just to here. And so we make the adjusting entry, debiting supplies expense for 3000 and crediting supplies. So what has happened? In the year involved, we had these supplies. And so it's got to go to the expense account when it's used. And then we're going to close it out in the closing interest. So we debit supplies 5000 credit to cash 5000 Then when we determined that we only had $2,000 in supplies, we only got $2,000, we know we must have used 3000 If we had $5,000 in the bank at the start of the period, and if we had 2000 at the end of the period, then we must have spent $3,000. So in this case, uh, it's the difference. So in this case, it is the difference between what was in what we, how much we bought and what was left. So we debit supplies expense and credit supplies 3000. 
and then and then so So, so we assume all of this occurred in 2017. So this is 2018 is the next year. So right now, you know, we're just dealing with 2017. We haven't gotten to 2018 yet. We bought 5,000. We used to. It was 3,000. And so when we got to the expense account so in 2017 uh you know this is what happened It's 2017. This is where we're at 2017. Okay. Now we're getting ready to go to 2018. Okay. So everything was 2017. Now we go to 2018. And when we go to 2018, you bought $6,000, $6,000 in supplies. Now, just like with your bank account, if you have $2,000 in the bank, on December 31st, 2017. And when you get into 2018, you still got that $2,000. So maybe let me. Insert. So you still, you know, so when we get ready to go into 2018. You're going to bring your 2000 with you, okay? It's like with your bank account. You had this at the end of the year, so that's your starting amount in 2018. So we got 2000 and 8000 We buy, and we bought 8000 worth. So we had 2000 We bought 8000 Then we Then when we take the inventory, it's only 4000 in there. So it's only... 4,000 in there. So in the first year, it was 2,000 in there. Now, when we get to 2018, we bring down the 2,000. We bought 8,000 more. There's only 4,000 in there. So what's our AJE going to be in 2018? What is our adjusting entry going to be for 2018? Sure. So right now in 2018, we're at 10,000. But our inventory out of supplies only shows four thousand. So what does that mean? We spent six thousand on the inventory. Spent six thousand on inventory. So we have to debit supplies, expense, and credit supplies. So in twenty eighteen is only gonna be four thousand dollars. And so
And so here we have 2018. And when we make that AJE, we're going to have 6,000 in supplies that year. Once again, we'll close it out with a closing entry. So if we didn't make the AJEs, what would happen? Supplies would have been at $5,000. Then we bought the other eight, it'd be at 13000 So if you don't make adjusting entries, you just keep building up what's in the supplies account. But, you know, those items have been utilized. So the internal transaction must be made showing how much has been used. Are there any questions? Okay, because can, can you scroll down a little bit? Scroll down here. Um to the, right there. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. We gotta have this quiz today, right? Didn't we say we're gonna have a little quiz on this today? Are we ready for the quiz almost? Okay, who has number one? Where's Who has number two? Miller? Yes. Well, I Miller, you just have to do one and two. We can't do two without that, so. Okay. Take us through number one, Miller. Okay. It says, J.J. Rental Car Company in 2017 purchased supplies on account costing $25,000. At the end of the year, supplies on hand totaled 5000 Record the journal entry to acquire supplies and the adjusting entry required at year end. So in the beginning, you purchase supplies on account costing $25,000. So I'm going to debit supplies for $25,000. And I'm going to credit um, accounts payable for $25,000 as well. It says at the end of the year, you only had 5000 on total. I mean, 5000 on hand total. So I'm going to um, debit supplies expense. If you only have 1000 And I'm going to credit supplies. Twenty thousand. How much? Twenty. Okay, twenty thousand. Okay. So on the T account under supplies, we're gonna debit. We're gonna debit um twenty five thousand and credit twenty thousand. Okay, so when we go to that T account. This is 2017. Mm -hmm. We said we would put in that T account 25,000. Mm -hmm. For debit. And credit uh, 20,000. So we make the AG, AJE. And so that would mean that what? We have what? We have 5,000 left over? Yes. So now what happens in 2018? Okay. In 2018, JHJ Car Rental Company purchased supplies paying cash in the amount of 15000 and purchased an additional 20000 in supplies on account. Record the entries to purchase supplies. Also record the adjusting entry required at year end in 2018. If supplies on hand total 10,000, your adjusting entry should reflect the fact that beginning supplies for 2018 were 5,000. Okay, so it says that in 2018, you purchased supplies paying cash for 15,000. So we're going to 
uh, debit supplies for 15,000. And we're going to credit cash for 15,000. But you also purchase an additional 20,000 in supplies on account. So you're going to debit supplies for 20,000 and credit accounts payable for 20,000. Your supplies will add up to 35,000. So you're going to debit 35,000 under the 5,000, which equates you now to 40,000. 40, So when we begin and we put these post things in here, remember we had 5,000. Mm -hmm. So let's bring our 5,000 down. And then we have what? The uh, 35,000. So we put them in there separately. So it was 15,000. Mm -hmm. Then 20,000. So what's the total amount in supplies at this point in 2018? 40,000. So we got 40,000 in there. Mm -hmm. How much is supposed, how much we do the inventory is what? When we do the in inventory, we're left with 10,000. So what's our AG got to be? If we're left with 10,000, it has to be 30,000. 30,000. So that would be an expense that second year. In the first year, uh, what did we have? 20,000 in there, I believe. Yeah. But that first year, I'll just put it up here, 20,000. Okay. Any questions? So remember, you keeping track of all of these, and let's see where's Miller at. So we had a good Miller time, so we put twelve points down for Miller since she did an extra one. Any questions? Okay, is Murphy here? Okay, who has number four? Callahan? Yeah. Callahan. I here? have number four. I am, I'm here. Okay, so you have number three and four. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Um, number three, JHJ Shoe Company in 2017 purchased supplies on account costing $15,000. At the end of the year, supplies on hand totaled $5,000. Uh, record the journal entry to acquire supplies and the adjusting entry required at the end of the year. So um, we purchased supplies on account. So I am debiting $15,000 for supplies. Um, and we did that on accounts payable, so I'm crediting accounts payable fifteen thousand. And then um, at the end of the year, uh, we only have five thousand on hand, so the AJE is going to be for debiting supplies expense for ten thousand and crediting supplies for ten thousand. So we're just making the adjusting entries on these. Now you got to go ahead and do the posting. Everybody else, you know, so you're only going to learn if you begin to put those in there, not copy what I'm doing. So on this one, I would expect that you would have gone on and did this posting. So what happens in number four? So in number four, um, we purchased a JHJ Shoe Company purchase supply supplies paying cash in the amount of 5,000 and purchased an additional 10,000 in supplies on account. Um, so we are going to debit supplies for 5,000. 
um, in the first entry and we're going to credit cash for 5,000. And then we will also, because they have purchased additional um, supplies, we're going to also debit supplies for 10,000 and credit accounts payable for 10,000. And then at the end of the year, um, it stated that we had um, a total of $4,000 on hand. So when you're doing your adjusted growth or the AJE, you're going to do a debit supplies expense for $11,000. And then uh, credit supplies for $11,000. And we're doing that because we took into account what... Um, the ending year amount was for 2017. Are there any questions? So what I want you to do is to go and put these in the T account. So take a few minutes and put this problem in a separate set of T accounts and see if you understand what's going on. And if you have any questions, so you got five minutes to get that done. Dr. Boyd, are we going to turn that part in? Because I just did it on the actual Word document. I didn't put it into a spreadsheet this time. I probably should have. Well, you know, just so you have all 40 something of them done. Okay. Just so you have 40 something done. Are there any questions by anybody? Okay, so I will review five and six next time. So five and six, you'll be on at the beginning next time so that you will be able to do a review. Why do I only have 18 people today? I'll tell you. And then they will proceed to email me and want me to answer them in terms of what happened today and what homework is due and everything. Let's fill up my emails. Well. I guess my standard thing is going to be come to class. Right, Pinto? Just come to class. Okay. Let's look at insurance. You see, we've been buying insurance. And And, you know, you, we buy insurance. I think if you got a car, most people here have insurance. So, and most time you're going to buy insurance, you're going to pay it in advance. But as the insurance expires, you got to record it. So, buying insurance is an external transaction, typically cash. And then when the insurance expires, you got to make the adjusting entry. So in this problem, it says, let's assume a company purchased a 12-month insurance policy for $24,000 on April 1st. 
a company purchased a 12 month insurance policy on April 1st for 24,000. So we debit cash 24,000. Credit cash for 24,000. That's how we stand on April 1st. Now we get to the end of the year. So if you got a 12 month policy, is it still worth 24,000 on December 31st? Is it worth 24,000 on December 31st? No. How much is it worth? So we have 24,000 in here. So the first thing was we'll say, well, if I got 24,000, I'm going to divide it by 12. So I know that that's going to equal what? So it's worth 6,000 at the end of the year. Because it's expiring at the rate of what? 2,000 a month. Okay. So when we get ready to get this expense, it's expiring at the rate of 2000 a month. So we buy it on April. If we buy it on April, how many months from April to December? Nine. Okay. So we have nine months uh, uh, that, that are uh, gone by. Then that's two thousand a month of what eighteen thousand dollars. So does everyone see that? What we're going to do is to get the monthly expiration rate by dividing by twelve for the prepaid insurance, and then we're going to see how many months were used up. If we bought it on April first, then that would be nine months. If we bought it on July 1st, it would be six months. If we bought it on September 1st, it would be three months that we used up. So we calculate the monthly expiration rate. Then we multiply that by the number of months that expire. Are there any questions? Okay, so in this first year, we'd have a we'd have expense of eighteen thousand dollars. Now, let's suppose we go to the next year. We go to the next year. And the insurance goes up. So let me just see. So that's when we get to the next year and insurance goes up to $30,000, okay? So when April rolls around in the next year, we're going to debit prepaid insurance. And we're going to credit cash, but it's $30,000, okay? So 
So remember now, this is April. Twenty seventeen. So in April twenty eighteen come around. You gotta buy some more insurance. So now when we get to this next year now, what is gonna be our so this is twenty seventeen. What's gonna be our insurance expense for twenty eighteen? So let's look at our account here now. We had twenty-four thousand in the account. We we wrote off eighteen thousand. So we got we had six thousand. Will it be twenty-eight five? Okay. Well, let me ask you this. Suppose you were paying rent at the rate of $2,000 a month. You had a lease and you signed that lease in April of 2017 and it was $2,000 a month. Then when you got to 2018, it was $30,000. So, And then let me insert row below, insert row below. Didn't want to insert it, but we'll, we'll work with this anyway. So we were at 2000 a month, but we got the 30000 divided it by 12. So now, our rent is going to be what? 2500 So how much rent would you pay in 2018 if that was your situation? If that was your situation, how much rent would you pay in 2018? Taking into account that there was a previous balance of 6000 that had to be paid from January 1st to April, plus what you would pay until the end of the year, we would end up paying a total of 28500 All right, so... There would be four months, excuse me, what? No, three no, months, ahead. three months that you pay what? $2,000. So you'd have three times 2,000. Right. So you pay 6,000 in the first three months. Then what's your mm -hmm. landlord gonna want, want for those last nine months? The twenty five hundred dollars a month. He's going on twenty five hundred a month. So what's nine times twenty five hundred? Twenty two thousand five hundred. Did I do that right? So the total expense in twenty eighteen is going to be what? Twenty eight thousand five hundred. Twenty eight five hundred. Twenty-eight five hundred. Well, Callahan, we're gonna have to change your major to accounting. <laughs> you don't need to be a marketing man, whatever I saw you were made you then. I'm health administration. <laughs> oh, you have me to help. Well, I know I can't get these health people to come to business. 
I've been thinking you. about it actually. You have. I'm I amazed. Have. I've never, you know, the health administration made it do very well, but I've never been able to get one to change. But but they do have accounting in, or you know, so it might be good to do the accounting part. You know, being the business office in the health sector. Yep. All right. So look at that. We, of course, will review this next time. We got one other thing we got to do today. So, so typically, I think students, you know, you all prime on the second part of these or whatever. Make sure you, if you got to do more than one part, you can do more than one part. So typically, an A or B student has the second year of a two sequence, but just like today, you need to have that problem work so you can do your part first and second year. Let's look at long-term assets. And they just like these other assets. Uh, so suppose you buy a car that costs $30,000. And let's see. Pay three thousand down. You've made this journal entry a lot of times, so you owe twenty-seven thousand. As soon as you drive that car off the lot, what do you know happens? As soon as it hits the pavement, its value goes down. It goes down. So you can go around showing the auto at thirty thousand dollars. So let's say it says assume this auto has a four year life. So what you got to do is expense it at the rate of seventy five hundred dollars a year. How do we get to seventy five hundred dollars a year? We took the thirty thousand. And we simply divided it by four. So now another thing that's different. So when we make this adjusting entry, we're going to debit depreciation experience. But we're going to credit accumulated depreciation. What kind of an account is accumulated depreciation? It's a contra asset account. When we have assets that are going to last more than a year, we always want to keep the original costs on the books. And so we'll have the auto account, and we're going to keep it at 30000 so we know what we paid for it. But when the expense occurs, we debit the expense, but we credit accumulate depreciation. That way, we, you know, we know what the asset costs and we know how much depreciation has been taken on it. Now, in the next year, when you get ready to make this adjustment, you know, make the AGE for year two, it's same as it was for year one. So in year two, you uh, credit accumulate depreciation for seventy five hundred, and you debit depreciation for seventy five hundred. So you would continue to make this entry each year for four years. You buy the asset in year one. You debit depreciation expense and credit accumulate depreciation. You're gonna do the same thing in year two, and then in year three, and then in year four. Now we all you know, we make this entry. That's the best way to, in 2017. We don't make it again until 2018. Okay, so you know you only make it one time per year. So if I ask you for the depreciation. You give me 2017, 2018, 2019, or 20. You're not giving me all of them in one year. I only want one. You're only writing off one amount. So just keep that in mind. 
on our balance sheet presentation, when you do the balance sheet, uh, you're going to show The asset's going to be only at 30000 You're going to subtract the accumulated depreciation of 7500 So that asset going to be 22500 So this is how you're, you know, when you get to those long-lived assets, that's how they look. Original cost, less depreciation. In the next year, 2018, 30000 would be on that balance sheet again. But now the depreciation is going to be what? 15000 So we're showing the car worth 15000 But we're writing it down each period. Uh, we're always showing the original cost, but we're reducing it by the depreciation that has accumulated. So we're going over a little bit. We will, of course, review this next time, but the people who are assigned in this next section, you need to be looking at this and working. We're going to review this, but all of these people who are here, you all will be up next time. Any questions? See if I can stop sharing. Okay. So anyway, that group will be up. We're gonna go and review this next time, just like we did before. But if you've been assigned an AJE, then you gotta work on your 10 points and you gotta get it done. If you own that prepaid insurance, if the person ahead of you don't answer, then you expect it to answer because you we got to see the whole thing. So A and B students are typically on that second leg. So Muhammad, you got to answer all of it. If the first person not here, got it? All right. So we're working with adjusting entries. They're not like those regular ex external entries where I told you what the amount was. The eldest is agreeing with it. You got you got to do some work now. You got to think and calculate. But White and Hatton, you you all gonna be experts on this like y'all on everything else. So this is new and different, but you know that's that's why we here. You paid your money. And I'm going to make sure you get your money's worth and not more. Isn't that good that, you know, you pay your money and you, and you know your money's not being wasted? Isn't that a good situation? Pinto, is that a good situation? Okay. So we will take our time and work with it. Now, C students, I'm not going to strain you so much. All you got to be able to do is unearned income and supplies. So if you're a C student, that's all you got to be able to do. Unearned income and supplies. I'm not going to overwork you. Now these A and B students, I got to be able to do everything. But I, I, I'm not going to frustrate my C students trying to get them to learn everything. They get, you know, they get depressed and everything. We don't want that to happen. So, <laughs> right, Pinto? We, 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 we. <laughs> So, so anyway, now this, you know, I have to, you know, make sure I'm reaching everybody, so everybody will be reached, but nobody will be underreached. Okay, nobody's going to be underreached. So look at this. So remember, you're responsible for all of those AJEs. We should have most of them finished, but you got to get them all done. Uh, I'll be Professor also. Boyd. I'll be letting you know probably sometime tomorrow. Also, uh, on that journal entry study problem, how many you got to do to finish up? How many you got to do so you Professor can go through all the steps all the way through? Uh, I guess step eight, just about, which is you know the closing interest. But you got to have a lot more journal entries. You're gonna be need to be doing sheet one, two, and three. 
because you got, you know, you have said in your own interest, Muhammad. Professor Boyd. Yes. What do they have next? Just this inventory? Y'all got to do stable the cash flow too. Oh, they got to do that too? Yeah. Wait a minute, what do you mean next? Oh. In the course? After the AJE. Mm-hmm. Cash, statement of cash flow, then you gotta learn how to do the statement of cash flow, then inventories. Oh. So we got plenty of time, you know, we got plenty of weeks. But I'm such a nice guy, I might give y'all a day off to finish up those journal entries, so y'all won't be looking so, you know, whites there, just, whoa, this is too much. So we'll work with that. Yes. Already there, we... Professor Boyd. <laughs> Professor Boyd, next class, can we do it on a spreadsheet so that we can kind of see what that's supposed to look like with the adjusted, with the AJEs and what it looks like on the chart of accounts or not chart of accounts, sorry, the T accounts? Okay, we'll do that. That's a good idea. So we will pull the spreadsheets out next time. So so we, we'll have to go back and change it up because, you know, in a problem, you'd only see these once, but we're repeating them for learning purposes. So we'll, we'll, so we'll do that. We'll do it on the spreadsheet next time. So on the spreadsheet next time, we'll go back to uh, supplies and we'll put that on the spreadsheet, that one we're redoing. Then we go do prepaid expenses and, and the other. So we'll do that next time. So everybody have a pleasant weekend, but get into these adjusting entries. I got another class up, so I'm going to say so long to you all. We'll see you all on next period. Hang in there, but have a pleasant weekend.